it's done. The Find Me Junk Journal, based on when your child is missing, pamphlet for parents of missing children by parents of missing children. Good afternoon. It is Sunday the 25th. We are not going to push off deadlines for any reason anymore. It's finished. The Find Me Junk Journal is finished to the extent that your feedback guided me along. At the end, there were a couple of design choices before I put the book together that I asked for feedback on. Nobody had a preference that they stated, so I went with the original design. Here is your Type-C flash drive, and notice it goes from computer to USB, wow, that's small, A, or USB-C, and two, both phone and tablet. This is as good as it's going to get. And this happens to be, uh, I think 32 gigs, but I could be wrong. Where is the, <laughs> let's probably, um, it's actually covered by the sticker. Sorry about that, but you need this. Next thing. Our fancy leather spine that we did, and then we, and then I said, "Well, do corners." I didn't do the corners. This is my own fault. This is me, totally me, being distracted. So why are we not doing corners? A lot of times when you're building a junk journal, you have design considerations where you have to think way ahead, and then you have to walk yourself back step by step by step because some things cannot be put on until other things uh, have been accomplished. So our, our uh, corners are not going on. Here's the reason why. I glued down the pocket for your child's information before I put the corner on. That's the whole reason. Uh, it has a lot to do with me just being distracted. Just disasters and distractions. Enough of that. So here's your inside pocket. And this is, these are the photo corners. I told you in the very beginning you would need photo corners. Um, if you want an alternate uh, type of way to attach the photo so it's removable, all you have to do is cut two slits in the paper here, two slits in the paper here, and then you would slide the corner, you know, it would be this corner, or wherever you made your slits. You would slide the corner under the two slits and it will cause you to have the same uh, type of temporary place for your child's photo. All your child's uh, most important information right here. And then you have this pocket that is stuck. I'm just using this for filler right now. But you have this pocket that has blank copies of this folded in half so that you can just pull them out and give them to law enforcement or press or, you know, whoever needs that information should your child ever go missing. And let's not forget, this little junk journal is based on the booklet. When your child is missing, a booklet that is made for, from parents of formerly missing children or continually missing children, for parents of newly missing children with law enforcement and uh, you know, mental health professionals contributing along the way. Okay, next element is the checklists that are in the 144 page booklet. The 144 page booklet prints out to an eight and a half by 11 um, page with each one of these elements on one page. You can double side it. Uh, and cut that down by, you know, almost but not quite half. So as soon as 
you open your book, if you are in a situation where your child is missing, you're going to have what you need to do from the checklist in that book the first 24 hours. And the first thing it says is immediately, not you know, five hours later, not two hours later, immediately report your child as missing to your local law enforcement agency. And by the way, ask them to also report your child as missing to the National Crime Information Center, the NCIC missing persons file. There is no waiting period for entry into NCIC for children under 18. And that includes 17 and a half year olds, just so we have the math correct. Your non-emergency police phone number goes here. In case you need to call and update somebody, don't use 911 once you've made your initial report. And then your lead investigator name and phone number or name and email address, whichever you choose, goes here. Then we have all the checklists. Find recent photographs. They say black and white and color. I have a color here just for demonstration purposes, but you would do both. Go through the first 24 hours. Don't rush through it. Think things through, even though you're, you know, pretty upset and not able to focus. Here's the rest of the second 24 hours, and um, the lines don't show up on camera on this one, but this is a piece of lined note paper that's embedded in the template. We talked about this the last time. Uh, second 24 hours, your note page. Third 24 hours, your note page and more notes. Stop. That's what this is for. I'm, I'm going to provide you with the whole document from missingkids.org. It looks different than our template because I didn't print it directly. Um, I had to do a lot, of t a lot of work in publisher formatting it so I could get the checklists and the note pages in book match format, which is what this is. And you'll be printing each one of these pages is double-sided. So you'll be printing two pages that are double-sided. We've gone over this before, but for anybody who just stumbled on this journal and don't know what we're talking about, we're, we're reiterating some of the things we've talked about. So your, the whole missingkids.org document, which is when your child is missing, will go on your flash drive. Okay, the next section is a note paper section. And it's just strictly for, you know, you could, you could break it up, you know, wherever the, here's the middle right here. You could break it up and have um, the front section for, you know, further notes and the back section you could have, um, contact information or a call log this would be this back would be great for somebody who's helping you a family or a volunteer member do a call log so you know who you've talked to when and then on the back side since nobody stated a preference about whether you guys wanted a french padded board so just you had some places just stick things when you we're out talking to people, business cards, what have you. Nobody said they wanted that or didn't want it, so I left it out. So the back, so what would be the back cover is the waterfall. And I did not put a template on here because you guys didn't ask me for a template. So now you can pretty much make this waterfall anything you want it to be. I, I suggested and I still strongly suggest your lead investigators information should be on the top of this waterfall. So even though you have name and phone number here or name and email address here, you have all of the law enforcement lead investigator uh, information right here. After that, you can um, 
use these waterfall pages any way you think that they are um, useful to you. Mm -hmm. And I even left, I only glued it down at the top. So I even left you a little spot back here where you could, you know, put a, an envelope or some, some other thing back here if you wanted to. And then finally, I went and spent some money on you guys other than the Type C flash drive. And I bought a packet of small sticky notes, which if you have followed the dimensions that I used, this sticky note uh, pad, which I've glued down, you know, at the top. I've actually glued it down and it's not dry yet. Oops. Anyway, uh, this sticky note pad, you can see, will come right to your book board. I did not, uh, I want to point out to you, other than our Midori binding with the elastic, um, I did not do a closure for this because nobody said, you know, I want a button closure. I want, uh, you know, an elastic, uh, for example, show me how to do an elastic band closure. Nobody said anything. So I left it without a closure. Last thing I want to talk about is um, this Midori binding. We have done the checklist template. We have, we have a book that you made in the very beginning, practicing pamphlet binding. Wow, I've got an upside down page in there. Yay for me. Um, and then you have an extra elastic. You can construct another notebooklet or any other thing you want to do. If, if law enforcement gives you a pamphlet, for example, other than missingkids.org, all you have to do is fold it in half, uh, eight and a half by 11. All you have to do is fold it in half and you can use this back band for uh, anything I would suggest cutting a piece of cardboard or cardstock if your back elastic is pinching. But you can just uh, cut a piece of cardstock to hold this open a little bit and then just slide pamphlets, flyers, whatever back here um, the same way you would on a padded French board. So that's it. That's the Find Me Junk Journal. Now let's talk about that disclaimer that you've seen in previous Find Me Junk Journal episodes, as well as I flashed it when we started talking about the template. This template is based on when your child is missing, a pamphlet for parents of missing children by parents of missing children, and can be found on missingkids.org. This may not be sold for any reason. Why is that? We used only the checklists as our guide out of the 144 page PDF booklet. Therefore, our use falls under the fair use doctrine of Title 17, Section 107 of copyright law. Who holds the copyright for that book? Technically, the United States government does, but we are using the part we have copied directly under fair use for education purposes. I, Alpaca Maid, hold copyright for design and layout. As such, I'm giving you, the audience, full permission to reprint as many copies as you like. Make junk journals for everyone you know. Make them for total strangers and give them away. However, if you use my template in books, pamphlets, or junk journals for sale, you will automatically owe a percentage of sale to me, the copyright holder. So please honor the spirit of giving and do not sell anything derived from these videos, playlists, or template. Thank you so much. Now let's go on with the show. Since this is probably the last time I will have an opportunity to speak to you about this journal in the series, since this is the last of the series, I want to reiterate and even beat a dead horse a little bit. Please do not sell journals derived from this template because it was made by the community 
for the community in the spirit of giving, and as such should always remain free of charge for anybody who finds themselves in the crisis of a missing child. I would ask my friends and my subscribers and my viewers and my guests and my casual, you know, drop-ins, please share this out on your community walls. You're free to clip and uh, make your own video with proper attribution, which would be my banner up on the upper left-hand corner. I also would encourage those who have been keenly interested in this project to make their own. For the rest of the summer, whoever sends me video clips, shares, photos, however you uh, do this project, I will feature you in videos or on my wall or both. I it would be so excited to see what you do and if you make modifications that you think will be useful to the community. Please, please share it far and wide. While I've been running off at the mouth, you have seen four pictures of four children who have been uppermost in my mind since Summer Wells went missing. The first was Michael Monkey Vaughn, who went missing just about a month after Summer Wells did. There was also Oakley Carlson and Harmony Montgomery. And it's difficult for me, to, of the two girls you see, to say which one grabs my heart more. I haven't talked about Harmony because I really felt like I couldn't do any other child justice with the crazy way that the Summer Wells case has gone over the last two years. There are other people that I would like to give thank yous and shout outs to. First and foremost, you my subscribers and my regular viewers, including one of my oldest subscribers, Antenna Antagonist, America True Crime, and Corey Edwards. Thank you so much for your ongoing support. And to the papercraft creators who generously share their techniques, tips, and ideas, including Le Cafe Craft, who kept me laughing over the whole time that I was surviving wave after wave of disasters, and Susie's Creations, who also gave me encouragement early on. And special thanks to Smiley Stories World for a share at a critical time. It had nothing to do with the journal. It was a video on age progression photos of Summer Wells, and it was just one of those unexpected and generous acts of kindness. So thank you, Smiley. You're the best. And finally, to a group who gets made fun of almost as much as the replay crew gets ignored, the silent viewers. You lovely, quiet people who tiptoe in, watch my videos. Sometimes you leave me a, a thumbs up, sometimes you don't. Sometimes you leave in the middle of it, and that includes you, the two minute and 30 second crowd. I appreciate you, whether you ever say a word or not. That's a wrap for the Find Me Junk Journal. Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for your patience. And if you were here to the end, you got to thank you. God bless you. See you real soon.